What's up, y'all? We back with another episode of Defying Legacy. All right, and before we tap into this edition of the show, of course, I just want to shout out our online store, all right, which can be found in the link in the description of this episode. All right, we have t-shirts, all right, hoodies, long sleeves, mugs, all that. Cop the merch. Cop, Cop the merch. All right. Well, just like that, all right, we're going to tap into this episode. All right. We have Janae on the yes, show. Sir. It's good to have you. You know, CEO and owner of Pergola Appreciate here in New Britain. You. Absolutely. So if you could, just uh, introduce yourself and, and tell the world what it is that you do. All right. So my name is Janae Ferguson. I am the owner and CEO of Pergola Events right downtown in New Britain, Connecticut. Um, we opened our doors July 1st, and we are here to literally turn your events and make them exclusive to you. Mm. So if it's a baby shower, a divorce party, whatever you could possibly think mm. of, we just try to cater to our clients and really like make it different. Um, um, the space that I provide, I just want it to be a framework mm. for people to come and be safe mm. and turn up and have that, you know, that basement party. Right, 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 right. That, that was my main goal. Yeah. You know, um, so that was key to me. And I try to make sure my clients feel that vibe when they come in. Because gotcha. ain't nothing like them basement bashing right, parties. Right, 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 right. <laughs> you know, and, and it's crazy, too, because when we talk about basement parties and stuff, like, as we get older, we start to realize that it also can be, like, a business. Right? Correct. Like, so what kind of got you into this business to get started? So my dad has been throwing events in Hartford on Main Street, like okay. a West Indian club for years. I was always a kid mm. working the tickets at mm. the door. And in my mind, I'm like, there's another way to do this, but to do it right. Mm. You know, they would always bring in a different reggae artist and mm. stuff like that. But I'm like, all right, cool. How can I do this and capitalize in a different light yeah. back where I grew up? So mm. I lived in New Britain when I was like in middle school. Mm. There was no places to go. Yeah. And a lot of times in Connecticut, you'll see people driving all the way out to New Haven mm. to go party or to New York yeah. or to Boston in complete yeah. opposite directions than in our own like town. Right. And it's kind of crazy to me. So when I had the idea to open up Pergola, I was going to call it something completely different. Right. Yeah, yeah. But um, when I thought about it, I was like, listen, if I can create a, a framework and a platform for artists to yeah. come and still keep that concept, which is why I have Toxic Tuesday, mm. um, which is a open platform for open mic and mm. karaoke for people to come and share their music and share mm. their art. Um, talents are all form. It's crazy. Yeah. But creating a space where people can actually come and be creative was okay. really the idea yeah. where it started. And so it sounds like you identified a, a problem and mm -hmm. then provided a solution. So how was your kind of mentality towards that? Um, I am a creative myself, mm -hmm. so I write poetry. Mm -hmm. And there's not too many places that I can go to and say, hey, I want to go share my art with mm -hmm. an audience and get feedback. Right. So if you can't find the space, create a space. Mm -hmm. And that was really what really took off in my mind. And I just hit the ground running. Mm -hmm. As much as I could, so okay, okay. you know. Yeah, so I, I I like that. If you can't find a space, create a space. What what ultimately does that mean to you? So whenever I'm super resourceful, right? Mm -hmm. And I in the military I was human resources, so I always had to provide a solution for everybody. Mm -hmm. But for my own creativity and my like writer's block, I could not find a solution. Mm -hmm. So I created a space where I can come on my own platform mm -hmm. and share my art and share the design in the space, yeah. you know, and that. For me, was important, but it was. I started to realize it was actually bigger than me, because mm. now artists are like, "Hey, I have nowhere to go, and you are allowing me to come and perform three to six songs that they have, you know, mixed and mastered, written themselves, yeah. and produced, and they're able to do that up and on the mic in yeah. front of people and practice, mm -hmm. you know, before they can go somewhere else and say, "Hey, I'm gonna hit the stage somewhere." Yeah. But it's about building your confidence too, because right. if I can get up in my own space and feel comfortable, then I would hope that you know. Someone else can person, come, yeah, you know, yeah. and that that was really key for me. Yeah. But I'm not gonna lie, I got nervous the first time. Of course, of course. Of course. I, got, I was yeah. like, wait a yeah, minute. Yeah, yeah. Everybody, everybody but then knows. I realized it was my people. Mm -hmm. I'm in my space. Mm -hmm. It can it couldn't go wrong for right, me. Right, right. And so that I, I, I like that last part too. It's my space mm -hmm. in terms of it belongs to you. So you know, obviously people have constant conversation between like nine to five versus mm -hmm. entrepreneurship and stuff, which I don't feel like there's a wrong answer. Yeah. But what does it mean? kind of to you ultimately to have something belong to you and, and the idea about just ownership as a whole? Again, it's like, it's bigger than me now because mm. now this is a community space. Yeah. So it's something that I can provide to people, mm. you know, and everybody always talk about my, my, my. Yeah, it's mine, but it's like, it took a team to get mm -hmm. here. It took my investor to, mm -hmm. to really, hey, 
we got to buckle down and be frugal with, yeah. you know, with how we're spending construction. And then we're opening an event space mm -hmm. during COVID. What mm -hmm. does that mean? How does that look on our product? Like our projection margins, is this going to make yeah. sense? You know, and it really just took, you had to take a chance on yourself mm -hmm. and, um, and really just say, Hey, this is my limits and my left and right limits and what I'm willing to do. Mm -hmm. Um, and then you figure it out. Why are you so willing to take a chance on yourself? I have been in the army for eight years mm -hmm. and active duty lifestyle. I didn't really get to do a lot that I wanted to do. I got to travel the world and see so many different things. But when I said I came back home, what does it mean to come back home? It meant to come back home and leave a mark a little bit. Mm -hmm. Cause I don't traveled and seen and experienced so much different culture. Yeah. Connecticut has some sense of culture, but a lot of people, put us in a box because we're a Boston or New York, mm -hmm. you know, we don't have our own identity. I want to have my own identity in Connecticut. You know, mm -hmm. I want us to have our own sense of culture and mm -hmm. space because we have some beautiful people here yeah, yeah. and talented artists, musicians, um, spoken word artists, and they don't get highlighted until they go to Boston or they right, go right. to New York um, or Atlanta or, you know, yeah, they yeah. venture off. But it, to have our own sense of culture, mm -hmm. even within the community, um, I think is mad important because yeah. when we were kids, we had enrichment programs, right, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah, like, yeah. let's, wow, let's, let's, let's take right. it there. Wow, let's yeah, take it there. Wow, but yeah, yeah. all of those enrichment programs were different cultural things that we got to learn. We had mm. Chinese writing for mm. enrichment. Yeah. We had uh, Tabata classes yeah. like that. We don't have that anywhere else mm -hmm. but our school provided that to us mm -hmm. but in my space we teach dance classes we have latin nights we have reggae nights mm -hmm. we do a toxic tuesday night and mm -hmm. we have an old school night so it's where you bring in all the different cultures and collectives together mm -hmm. and actually having it in the same space so that is the part that means the most to me yeah okay and i would say going off that too how important do you think it is to address the fact that people are good at different things right like Everyone, I, I won't say has a lane, but yeah. you know, everyone has a different type of passion. Everyone, Correct. You know, there's Every, everybody has something that they're good at. Everyone right. has stuff that they need to work at. But for the things that you're good at, I think it's super important to not always see a way to make money off of it, mm. but see a way to actually share what you have to, mm. you know, what you learned, what you developed. Um, a lot of people are handy, right? Mm. And they can make stuff with no machinery, mm. no YouTube university, right, 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 you know, right. and they can just, just correct. Yeah. And I feel like being able to, to voice it and share it and that knowledge, because knowledge is power. Mm -hmm. If they can share it in a light that like highlights them, even if they're humble, it's mm -hmm. cool. But if you could share that with the world, I think it's beautiful. Yeah. I really do. Yeah. So what would you say to someone who might be hesitant on like sharing their gifts to the world who might think someone who might think like you know yeah i'm good at this but i don't know if someone else can, can really learn i would say be brave be resilient and trust yourself trust the process mm -hmm. know that not everybody's not supposed to like your stuff not everybody's mm -hmm. supposed to like you um and be confident be brave mm -hmm. and don't fold because there's 10 other people that wish they could have mm -hmm. tried to you know Put themselves out there in a different light and they probably failed because of being shy or timid you know i'm an introverted extrovert mm. if that makes any sense mm. Mm. i stay to myself but i do things for the masses like mm. i do think for everybody else i can be outside but even when i'm outside i'm like in my corner yeah, 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 yeah. i put it together cool right. decorated the event cool mm. they're enjoying themselves yeah. i'm happy yeah you know what i mean so that that that's the best part. Be brave and be confident yeah. and resilient in anything that you do. Um, and don't let nobody tell you no. I don't like that word. Yeah. I don't like that word. Yeah. No. yeah. Well, yeah. Mm -hmm. why, why, why is that? Did you have to... Yeah, um, key reason why I needed to join the military, I had no discipline. I was a <laughs> wild child. So learning, learning no and being able to like have some structure mm -hmm. and understand that, hey, listen, no for right now. Mm -hmm. But guess what? You're going to find a way to make it happen. Mm -hmm. um, in the military, I struggled in the beginning because mm -hmm. of my attitude or mm -hmm. my, my slick mouth. I always mm -hmm. had something to say. But I had to learn to, to listen. And I learned to listen twice and then speak once. Once I figured out that concept, nothing else mattered. Mm -hmm. Because then I started to actually process information in yeah. my mind and actually hear people for what they were actually saying and not having a premeditated like response in my mind. Mm -hmm. I used to do that shit all the time. Mm -hmm. Especially like, you <laughs> yeah, know, in school. Yeah. yeah, 
I'd be like, you ain't gonna say shit. Yeah. Like, like, you know, you just be ready to hit him back with a rebuttal. Right, 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 right. But once I started to actually just listen and you know, not be so slick with it, it was like, okay, wait, this person actually making some popping sense. Right, right, right. Yeah. So, so where, where's, where's the power in that though? Just, just Where is the, po um, the power in listening is outstanding because mm -hmm. I listen to people that only are places that I want to be, mm -hmm. right? So if you are the smartest person in that room, you're in the wrong room, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. everybody knows that. Mm -hmm. But if you're in the right room, if you're doing too much talking, you're not listening. You're not able to absorb the, mm -hmm. the knowledge and wisdom in the room. So that's why it's important for me to be like sitting back in that corner and just being mm -hmm. observant. Um, there's power in being observant mm. and listening to your peers and listening to your elders. You know, it's crazy when you're a kid, yeah. they say, listen to your elders, right? But no, listen to your elders that are going places that actually are doing the things that you want in this world because I could ask advice from 10 people, but only three of those people actually have the ambition and the drive and determination mm. to be somewhere. You know, I could listen to my auntie, sister, cousin, but if they're not where I want to be, it's going to go on one ear and come right out the other. Right. And I had to buckle down from the military and then becoming a civilian again to figuring out what that looked like. Mm. Because I can't be all proper, proper, right. you know, structure. I got to be more chill. Yeah. And um, I'm loving it, actually. <laughs> <laughs> I'm loving it. So, all right. So, one word that I like is discipline. Mm -hmm. And so, what would you say has been the biggest change between before you were in the military versus now? Um, I still don't sleep, so there's no change. You don't sleep? No. Okay. Four hours is all your body needs to function. Really? Yeah. There's going to be a lot of people that disagree. Yeah, there's going to be a lot of people that disagree with that one, but four hours is all my body needs to function. I work in the party industry, okay. and I work for two schools. Mm. So I am up bright and early in the morning, and I'm out late at night, mm. and my events don't end till two, three in the morning sometimes. And I got to get right back up mm. and turn around and, and act like nothing happened. Mm. You know, so at a certain level, yes, sleep is important. Sleep when you can, take naps. Right, but right. Um, not telling that you only can right, go right, off right, four right, hours. Right, right. But um, I feel like my body and my mindset has been literally broken down and built up to be a warrior, strong yeah. and resilient. So if I have my mindset to something and I, that's my schedule, that's my schedule. Yeah. You know, and I keep it very tight. Right, right, right. You know, 30 minute increments, next okay. client, yeah, yeah, you know yeah. what I mean? So, do you think it's a, a, a mental kind of thing too? Or is it just like a. You know? I feel like if you can build up the mental and train your body, mm. um, then no one can stop you. Because mm. the only people that stop you is you. Mm. No, the only person that can stop you mm. is you. Mm. You know, but you have voices in your head. And that's why I said people at first, because you'll have that devil on your shoulder and then yeah. the good one on the other yeah, side yeah. like you could do this no the fuck you can't you know yeah, what i mean yeah, it goes always, back yeah, and yeah. forth so how do you deal with that though like how do you like you got to how, how is it that someone could just say all right let me follow you know the positivity versus oh you, you remember your goals mm. that tunnel vision straight to your goals yeah if i take this nap right now and i don't finish posting whatever or yeah. sharing this content or meeting up with this client i can't get to this point mm. so you kind of you don't put yourself on the back burner because you do have to take care of yourself, but you just stay so focused and you set yourself up yeah. and you prepare and you plan. Mm. Um, when I was getting out of the military, I planned for this. Mm. I planned to have this. So I got out June 23rd and then opened my doors July 1st. I had already backwards planned mm. months prior. So by the time July 1st got here, I was like, it's, it's go time. Mm. Why? Because I had already planned for a year out mm. of not being in the military anymore, not receiving those paychecks anymore, yeah. pouring all my savings and my money and working with my investors to get to what I needed mm. to do, you know, and it was tough because I had a lot of hurdles come mm. right before and it's like, oh, your doors are open, but 12,000 things need to be right, done right, right. beforehand. If you prepare yourself and you backwards plan, it makes it so much easier when you can break up those little goals and those little tasks yeah. into small increments versus it being a thousand things that need right. to be done. You know, so that that was important too. Um, really slowing it down the process. Yeah. So talk to me too about like the backstory and the overall hurdles. Okay. So when I got out of the military, I was going through a lot because I had equal opportunity cases that were mm -hmm. open. Um, about my sexual orientation, and I'll be straightforward about that. Um, a lot of people in my unit didn't know at first mm. who I really was, mm. because obviously I was Specialist Ferguson, right. I wore a certain hat. 
Um, but when I kind of got outed by my unit, um, a lot of people kind of gave me cold shoulder, mm -hmm. but that was cool. I kind of just dealt with it how I needed to talk to Jag. And then I had all of this going on, construction right, right, right. and Connecticut. My unit was out in Massachusetts. Mm -hmm. That's 89 miles in the opposite direction of mm -hmm. where my home base is. Mm -hmm. So it was just drive in there to work be there before 6 a.m., mm. you know, fall in, first formation, and run it back here to, like, finish Deal painting, with, yeah. finish with construction, you know, and I knew I was getting out, and it was, like, life, family, business, COVID, money, mm. things are getting tight, relationship not making mm. sense. Mm. Like, it was a lot of different things that were coming into play, and I just told myself nothing else is going to matter. If I can get this done. Mm. All the things that are before me are gonna like literally be in the front of my mind now, but they're gonna go to the back of my mind because I'm getting the things that I need done. Yeah. And once I got to that level of just, again, resiliency and not letting anything stop me, and no one telling me no, it got to a point where I started watching people in my life kind of just walk out. Mm. And I was okay with it. Mm. I was like, you're not serving my purpose. Mm. And I feel like everybody has a purpose and that's to live. And I needed to live my best life in the way that I thought was possible. So when people start walking out, you gotta let them kind of trickle out because mm. when they start seeing money and their eyes get bright, mm. you know, you can't have those people around you and it's sickening, but you learn who your real people are. And I think that's the blessing in it. You mm. know, they make that comment, uh, it's lonely at the top. Mm. That's okay. Mm. That's okay. And it's not the worst thing, because if your if your soulmate's supposed to be your business, then yeah, that's it. That's then it. your soulmate gonna have to be your business. Yeah. So when you say it's worth it, though, yeah, a hundred percent. Because regardless of of anything else, I plan on opening another business. Mm. You know, and it might not be an event space. It might be something completely different. But I love being an entrepreneur and working for myself. Mm. There is you work more. <laughs> yeah. you work more but it's your shit it's your stuff it's your space it's your energy and if people come in and out of your venue or your business and they feel good about themselves no matter how bad their day would have been but they came to turn up with you mm -hmm. or they came to your spoken word event and they felt better that's what's worth it mm -hmm. you know because that's a part of what i feel like is my legacy i want to give people a safe space to come and actually express themselves and be creative yeah. So if I can do that, then yeah. Yeah, for sure, for sure, for sure. Um, so you mentioned your investor, and the reason why I asked about the overall hurdles is because naturally, you know, when you post a picture, just anyone in general, mm -hmm. of like your business, people say congratulations, right? Yeah. And people pull up, and it feels good to see, you know, the success behind it. Mm -hmm. But you know more than anyone kind of what you had to go through to get here. Mm -hmm. So what would you say to someone that's looking to either become an entrepreneur or have an event space. I'm okay. telling them like the real truth. The real it's truth. It's not just, oh yeah, you know, I'm gonna create an event space, people will pull up and mm -hmm. you know, be a client and you know. I'm gonna tell you the first first two events that I threw. Um, I opened the doors, I put out the flyers, I had a promotion about it on social media, street mm -hmm. team had everybody working. When I first opened those doors and nobody showed up in the first hour and a half, you start to feel your heart and your gut mm -hmm. like, wait, is this worth it? But no, you chuck it back up and you're like, oh, they gonna come. Mm -hmm. And you keep showing up for yourself. That's all you have to do. Mm -hmm. You keep showing up for yourself, people gonna come. They're gonna support you. Why? Because they're gonna see your blood, sweat, and tears embedded into your business. Mm -hmm. And if you become your brand, as you see, like yeah. he's rocking, he promotes <laughs> yeah. it, he talks about it, <laughs> but you literally, you are your brand. So. If you believe in yourself, that's all that matters. Because mm. there's going to be one out of ten, but that's okay. If that one person shows up, somebody showed up for you. So mm. if you believe in yourself, nothing else matters. And I believe wholeheartedly in my business model mm. and in who I am. And the event space industry alone is a billion-dollar industry. Mm -hmm. So whatever capacity you can take it from a wedding venue yeah, to, yeah. you know, just event space or just, you know, whatever it is that you aspire to do, like, Make sure you own it and hone in on what your what your morals are and what you stand strong on. And I feel like after that, just run. Yeah, just just and yeah, take yeah. off. Yeah, just run. No, just run, and, just run, and, run, and run. like the top three tips I would give to someone who is creating their business model and want to model what it is to have an event space, find a way to make your schedule available. 
for people to easily act, like make appointments mm -hmm. and say, hey, I need to see the, the venue, do a tour. Um, that would be key, making yourself accessible. Um, number two, I would definitely say, be able to reach out to your clients off of social media. Mm -hmm. um, not just from having a business line or a Google line, actually have an email thread that yeah. you send batch emails out mm -hmm. to your clients. Cause guess what? I sent out my happy holidays from my phone to everyone. Mm -hmm by sending one message. Mm. And that was the easiest way for me to just do that. Right. Um, figure out your system and that, that would be key. Um, number three, I would say have a support system for people who actually are gonna work with you. Um, I do not do this by myself. And if I, I would be lying to anybody to say right. that I did this by myself. Oh, right. no, I have a team that I work with. Um, finding yourself a social media manager, um, someone that can run those posts for you, a venue attendant that knows your business inside and out. Um, so if a plug is missing, they walk in and they know mm -hmm. off rip, hey, the lights aren't working, mm -hmm. the remote is here. Do you know what I mean? Something so good. when you are absent and not present at your business, that it can still run at your event space. And mm -hmm. if you could do that, those three things, you can, you can make you'll be good. Yeah. Let people schedule while, you know, easily from their phone, Make sure you can be able to contact and reach all your clients like through email and phone off of social media and having people in your corner that know your business that can help you mm -hmm. and support you. Um, those would be my top three yeah. tips to any person trying to do this. So I would say going off the last one, you know, mm -hmm. the idea of building a team. Mm -hmm. How was your approach towards that? Hmm. Did, you, did you tell people your goals or did you just kind of? Um, I kind of, as I opened, I was doing everything myself. Yeah to figure out the roles and responsibilities of what my venue attendant would do versus my door attendant. Mm -hmm. um, so you will have to know the ins and outs of the job that you're trying to have, have someone else do. So you gotta do it yourself. And it might seem like a lot, but I was the one at the door, I was the one behind the DJ booth, I was mm -hmm. the one on the mic hosting. So once I got in a certain like level of experience doing all of those, I was able to delegate and trust mm. and say, hey, I think you can handle this. Let me know if this is in your capacity. If not, this is the pay, this is, you know what mm. I mean? Like this is what I offer. If not, then I will have to go back to me right. doing it until, mm. cause I don't trust. Yeah, I, <laughs> cause I don't trust. My business, yeah. Yeah, yeah, my business yeah. is my baby. My business is my baby. So um, I would say I trusted the wrong people, but mm. then you learn as you go. Mm. Um, and you kind of figure out what works and what doesn't work, but you, you play with it, mm -hmm. you know? And working with friends and family is not always the smartest. It is not the, always the smartest. It might seem the cheapest, because it'll be your boy or your friend and they think they can help you out, but that doesn't mean that they're going to give you like the same high level of expectation that you have for yourself and how you would do something. It's not the same way a family member or yeah. friend would if they're just helping you out. Mm. You know what I mean? You would hope so. Right, 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 right. But um, you learn to trust and then as you build, you can start to pay more and then mm. you can start to franchise and yeah. have different merch and have yeah. people in here brand ambassador and right, doing right, right, different right, things. Right. So um, you got to play with it, but you have to be very strategic. It is a chess game, not a checkers game. Mm and you have to move very strategically. Move mm -hmm. slow, slow is smooth, smooth is fast, mm -hmm. and you get there, yeah. for sure. But how was that though? You said, you know, obviously your business is your baby, and I'm sure a lot of entrepreneurs can relate to that. Mm -hmm. So if it's your baby, how tough was it for you to delegate? How oh. tough was it to you to develop trust? And to I went on a out? trip to, to Austin, Texas, mm -hmm. and I had an event at my venue. And, and you weren't here. And I was not yeah. here. And for me, I was actually at peace. I was like, my phone not ringing. The client said she good. Two, three hours went by. Y'all, nobody texted me back. So <laughs> you, I, it was, you, were, you were good. You I was good. I, I, because I set my people up for success. Mm. Um, I came to the venue prior to me taking that trip. And I literally set everything up. Mm. Here's the layout. Here's what you need to do from when you walk in. Cut this light on, turn the temperature to this by mm. time, this, you know, yeah. so the room is at a certain, certain level. Um, I felt good that I had prepared my people well enough that mm. they didn't need to call me. 
Yeah. That's how I know I did okay. Yeah, okay, okay. And okay. I, I, I had no anxiety. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, Not, none at all? None. none. At first, the first hour. The first hour. I was going to say. When the client told me she got here, I was a little nervous. But everything was set before, so it was more just the decor team coming in gotcha. and just setting up what they had to. But they have already worked out of the space so many mm -hmm. times that they know it inside and out. Right. You know, so in six months i've hosted 30 events myself and mm. thrown over 41 parties so mm. it's kind of like all right my team knows right right it's the, and the, i don't need to be here for that mm, mm. um and that felt good so when i'm going to check out another venue i'm like okay well maybe i can do it bigger right, right you know right. and then i know how to prepare my team for bigger events and yeah. different things like that so feel good so how, how does that feel um to know that you know you've kind of reached the point now and obviously i don't think that would be the norm but like this idea of like you necessarily not having to be physically present. It feels it's amazing. Still, you know, if I could run my business from Aruba, I would. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'd be like, okay, you know, on cool, your phone. Cool, cool, cool. No, yeah. and, and that's a part of like learning how to make money, right? Mm -hmm. And do it in the right way. When you set up your business model, you want to set it up in a way where you don't physically need to always have to be like your online shop, right? Mm. That's your online presence. Yeah. People can come and purchase from you. I have an online website. You can't have your party in, but you can, they can well, access they, it. They can access what the venue looks like, how to go about getting the right decor package all online mm -hmm. without having to actually physically talk to me. Yeah. And that part is great because mm. You could just auto chat box and right, it'll right. answer all your frequently mm -hmm. asked questions because yeah. I ain't got the time all the time. I'm, <laughs> no, because you gotta remember, right, right, you're right. only one person. Yeah, yeah, you know? yeah, yeah, and yeah. It, I would spread myself way too thin if I didn't prepare my business model for what mm. I knew I would be doing and the lifestyle that I live. Yeah, I'm trying to be outside. Right, right, <laughs> right, right. But at the same time, you know, being you know a person that has limited time. And, Correct. I mean, I mean, honestly, we all do because mm -hmm. of the fact that you know. There's, there's, and there's one thing that all business owners wish they could have is more time. Mm. So when you're setting up your business model, if you can set it up where you are eliminating the clicks, eliminating the scrolls, where you have to go through each thing, have your stuff automated. I have all my emails automatically in tabs and folders. So when something comes up, if there's a keyword in there for, let's say, Toxic Tuesday, mm. someone is interested in being a performer at my event, if they mention anything that was related to that, my email box will automatically generate them and put them in certain boxes. So when I say, hey, I'm only spending 20 to 30 minutes on just finalizing these yeah. artists for the week, I don't have to scroll through a thousand right, emails right. to do so. I got my, my folder. Set up a system. Yeah, system, system. so set your systems up um, so that you can succeed. Because if you don't, you will literally piss poor planning. You're yeah, going to take 10 steps that. backwards. Yeah. And... You're gonna get overwhelmed, um, and I'll admit it, I had anxiety about a lot of different things because it can get extremely overwhelming, um, but you learn how to deal with it and it just gets easier right. each time. So what kind of systems um, would you recommend or that like, you would suggest in terms of what's been successful for you, whether it be My like having a system, kind of online. like online system yeah. for running? So like, yeah, so the space or just, you know, your personal time. Okay. Um, so my personal portal that I, my mm. favorite one is HoneyBook. HoneyBook is my go-to portal because it allows me to create templates for my invoices and I can customize them based on each client. Mm. So if I know a client doesn't need to have six fold out, six foot tables, I could take yeah, that yeah. off of the customized invoice. It's literally a click of a button. Um, HoneyBook has been my favorite because... I can literally send those batch emails yeah. right through it. Yeah. Um, I have my online scheduling portal through it. Mm -hmm. So I literally, it's my all-in-one source where I go to to get everything done. Um, and then I have a different source that I use for my website. Um, but either way, HoneyBook is my go-to. Okay. Um, Shouts out to them because they just sent me a, a little promotion thing to give <laughs> me some money. Oh, so that was yeah. a plug. Yeah. <laughs> you know? <laughs> that was a plug. All right. Respect. Respect. Yeah. Um, so one thing, you know, a, a moment that you touched on briefly that I want to highlight even more was one of your first events mm -hmm. where you said there may not have been a lot of people that showed up, right? What made you decide to keep going? Oh, this is it for me. Mm -hmm. This There was no turning back. Um, and when you, again, put your blood, sweat, and tears into something and you go hard for yourself, there is no, no, mm -hmm. there is no, it's not going to work. Yeah. You figure out the kinks and you make it work. Mm 
Mm. You know, okay, maybe I give three, four weeks of promotion time before one single event. Maybe I bring in a, a different host that has a different following. Um, comedians, I started mm. bringing in comedians as my host. Mm. It was a different vibe, and it's a karaoke night or mm. a Toxic Tuesday night where it's an open mic night. Yeah. So my guests are getting entertainment. They're getting hookah, you know, they're getting a vibe. We're playing music that you want to hear, but then I switch it up because then it'll be an R&B type night. Mm. And you're not only going to hear R&B, then if you want to hear the trap music, we'll right, play right. that you too. Can, you know, vibe and, different type of Vibe yeah. different, you know, but you really, you cater it towards your audience and mm. then the people will come. Mm. And you keep your fingers crossed and you pray about it and yeah. you make it work. Yeah. <laughs> and so too, so I guess starting from the overall top, right? So if someone were interested in the event space business, right? Mm -hmm. And they didn't know much about it, but they, they just knew like, all right, that sounds like something I might, you know, want to tap into, right? Where would you have them start? Like what's, all right, let's say they go to youtube.com and type in event space and then bam, what's, what's, what's next from there? What's, I mean, you can go to YouTube, but it's hands-on experience. Right. So like, when I say I was at my dad's events doing the tickets, for the mm. Pasa Pasa Wednesday at the mm. West Indian <laughs> Club. You know what I mean? You, you gotta get your hands dirty. I would say the best bet is to actually go out and to maybe intern at a wedding venue and go mm. ask to be a part of their banquet team. Um, go to see what it's like from all aspects because if event space is in it, then maybe wedding planning or whatever it is, mm. you know, figure out what it is that is your niche and what you wanna go to do because if you don't, you're gonna go in it and kind of get lost, yeah. you know, and it's easy to get lost in any business because you think one business model is yours and then it expands into something different. Mm -hmm. I don't have caterers. I don't have a kitchen. I chose to find a menu that didn't have a kitchen because I don't want to have to deal with there's all of Yeah, there's a whole other process. So when you figure out what type of, because you know, like you can go from LLC, S corporation, like if you, mm -hmm. what type of business are you trying to build? Mm -hmm. You have to figure out that first. And if your business model does change, that's okay too. Just make sure you have the right permits and things to set yourself up mm -hmm. in the right light. And then, so you know, the state don't tell you you can't do something. Right, right, right. Because right, I ain't right, gonna right, have right. the state telling me I can't do of something. Course, of course, you know of course, what I mean? Of course, of course. I don't like the word right. no. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> the word no is ghetto. That's <laughs> <laughs> right. So, but that's that's what it is too, though. It's like, so obviously, it really just started out as a goal mm -hmm. and a thought, but eventually it turned into, you know, yeah. into something real. Me and my business partner drew this out on a napkin. Like, a napkin. Yeah, turn it up. And I was originally going to call it G-Spot. But then I couldn't have the prayer. Yeah, you call it G-Spot. I was going to call it G-Spot. Uh, <laughs> but then we were thinking about it. I was like, so wait. So made you not want to call it G-Spot? The, um, the prayer group that came in on Saturday. <laughs> <The prayer. laughs> I was like, wait. I don't think they can come in if it's G-Spot. Oh, man. Oh, no, yeah, that, they, that they, was they, real talk, though. Yeah, they might have a problem. No, but it was where the G's come. You know, the yeah. ladies and the gals. Oh, I mean, you know, yeah. However you want to word it, cool. <laughs> I'm not mad at playing words. But no, you know. and then, like, even... Even when I was trying to figure out my business model, yeah. I was like, is there a way that I can make it a nonprofit and do mm -hmm. different things like that? G spot ain't it for no nonprofit, mm -hmm. you right, know? Right, 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 right. <laughs> but no, Pergola came about uh, from the design. Mm -hmm. So what we built on the inside was creating the outside Pergola like lawn, you're outside mm -hmm. at your house, but still inside. We brought the outside inside. Mm -hmm. And uh, we kind of turned it up a mm -hmm. little bit. And that's why it's like dark, white, black, but then you have that ambiance of you're, you know, you're chilling. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, all right. So, I, I want a little more detail, though, about the napkin. Okay. About, like... Yeah. So, you just... Yeah. Out and just... We knew the right. dimensions at first. Mm -hmm. So, we kind of played with it. And then, we knew the walls were yellow and red. So, we was just like, nope, don't like that. Drew it. Ripped through the napkin with the ink a little bit. Yeah. And was like, all right, that's that's our business. That's what we're going to do. And um, it might sound crazy, but that was like one of the biggest days for me because my investor believed in me mm. and all I had was a napkin. Mm. And I'm like, this is what it's going to be. Mm. And he's like, all right. And he was like, I'm going to roll with you. All right, bet. Let's go. You wow. know what I mean? And sometimes it's like you could prepare, you can do so many different things. But all you, like I said, all you need is to believe in yourself. Mm -hmm. And everybody else will believe in you. Yeah. And once it comes together and you stay resilient, 
You'll be, you'll amaze yourself. You'll yeah. amaze yourself because I still pat myself on the back. I'll be like, I don't know how we made it through today right. or how we got to this point, but it is worth it when you are proud and it doesn't feel like work. Mm. And it feels like, hey, listen, my family are looking at me like, I didn't know you were capable of this because mm. I was quiet about it. Mm -hmm. I didn't know how it was going to come together. I just knew it was going to when it was ready. You know, I thought I was going to open. I didn't think I was going to open in July. I thought I was going to wait till after. But mm -hmm. I was like, no, it's go time. Yeah. It's go time. Yeah. So. So yeah. What, what, what's that been like? The idea of like, really, you just didn't know. But you jumped anyway. That level of fear. Mm. Ooh. It feels like, you know, when you're at the top of a roller coaster and you know you're about to just. Whoosh. Right, right, right. You know you're going to drop. Yeah. But you know when you slide out, it's like it's going to be smooth. Right. I knew that it could either hit the fan and just drop, and I, my stomach would just drop to, like, to my ass. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but I, I anticipated it, and yeah. I prepped myself. And I didn't brace too tight. Mm -hmm. I just kind of let go and let things happen. Mm -hmm. um, I let the fear out of my mind. Mm -hmm. I let fear go to the back seat of my life. And once you kind of take back the reins a little bit, yeah. you're in control. And again, no, ain't gonna work for me. So I had to figure out ways to maneuver and do it humbly, do it slow, do it smooth, and get to that next point where I'm like, okay, I think I got this. Mm -hmm. And always be your biggest advocate right. for it because people are gonna tell you no, and people are gonna tell you, I don't think this is possible, but you should prove them wrong. Mm -hmm. And tell your haters, fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. There you go. So I would say, too, just looking at the overall big picture, which is crazy, like, so you wrote down your initial goal on a napkin, mm -hmm. you know, and even coming, you know, through the, the military, military, and even seeing your dad have his own business and you know operate the way he did. It kind of leads me to the final question, the question I've asked, you know, everyone that comes on the show is, ultimately, um, how is it that you want to be remembered? How I'm gonna leave my legacy? Yeah. Um, I'm gonna be remembered as a warrior, someone who always had you know, not the easiest life, and she never let any of that stuff bother her. And she created a space, a safe space for other people to not feel bothered and just come and be themselves. Mm -hmm. um, I want to be remembered as someone who's just a bright personality, mm -hmm. always crazy, doing something wild. Mm -hmm. um, life for a party always, um, but still humble and chill at the same time. Right. You know, and someone that can be just multi-dimensional. Mm -hmm multi-talented and give herself the, the strength to always push through. That's mm -hmm. what I'm gonna be remembered as. That's real. That's, That's real. Yeah. You, you, you think you're uh, not necessarily just heading in the right direction, obviously, but do you think that that's how people feel now? Yeah, and I wake mm -hmm. up and I say those things to myself every morning. So mm -hmm. if no one else believes it, I do. So. That's it's all that really matters at the end of the day. Yeah. You know, that's all that really matters at the end of the day. Um, so, first things first, obviously, thank you, you know, for being on the show and stuff. So, But if you could, um, drop your uh, your social, drop oh, yeah. you know, your website, drop the, the address. Oh, yeah. Uh, drop, so, run wild with the, the I am Nike down underscore X on Instagram. There's two Ds in there, but uh, I don't take it. Um, <laughs> <laughs> other than that, Pergola Event CT is the Instagram for my venue. Um, we are located right downtown New Britain, 21 Arch Street. Um, come check us out. Toxic Tuesday is actually coming up next week, Tuesday, and um, it's gonna be lit. Let's see how toxic we can get before there the you, end of the year. There you go. I know we gotta wrap up 2021. 2021 was real hectic, and uh, it yeah. still is hectic. Yeah, and I'll, uh, I said last question, but I'm asking anyway. Okay. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so you mentioned the idea too of also opening up a business like in mm -hmm. the middle of COVID. COVID. For people to come and gather. Right. So yeah. what was your thought process, thought process on? Um, besides the fact that I'm batshit crazy for trying to do mm -hmm. that, um, I knew that smaller events were going to be a hit versus yeah. the bigger parties um, at Banquet Hall and you right, know, right, other right. spaces in Connecticut. But like, I was like, listen, if I can create an intimate boutique type of vibe yeah. where people can come and still turn up and have that same um, feel, then I'll be solid. Yeah. Um, I was, I was, I believe in myself, so ain't nobody. Right, 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 right. Yeah, hey, what, I knew what? I was gonna be good. COVID, it made me fearful, but it also made me um, just prepare better. Like having a hand sanitizer in the front, making people right. wear their masks when they're coming in. If we have an open mic night, using the disposable mic covers so mm -hmm. that people aren't, you know, just germs. Yeah. People nasty. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. Uh, I mean, so. Obviously, with COVID, it's, it's a serious, serious situation. Mm -hmm. But I feel like in everything, there's always going to be a reason for you not to do something. 
Correct. Right, like if you give yourself enough time and just to think about it, there's always a bad thing to your idea. Yes, definitely always think about the consequences and like the pros and cons of certain things and how you should maneuver. Um, and that's why I think if you backwards plan for something yeah. to move forward, um, you will literally look at everything from X and Y axis. Like you can't yeah. mess up. Um, but if things do arise that you weren't, uh, you know, paying attention to before, just keep that red flag in your mind. Um, so as you move through life, you see the red flags and the signs so that you don't run into the same um, problems again. Yeah. Because if you keep running into the same thing and you keep running into the same problem, you ain't doing so, something yeah, right. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah. I mean, right. It's all you prepare. I mean, you know, yeah. you know, shit happens, but when, you yeah. know, shit go left. And, and, and talk to people before that are where you want to be. So I have a lot of friends who own businesses, yes, but that not all event spaces. Find a mentor that doesn't have to have the same business as you, but they have the same mindset as you. Mm -hmm. You know, they can actually tell you, hey, you slack. Right, 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 right. You know your A game. Yeah, step it up. I need those mentors. Mm -hmm. Why? Because I'm gonna hype myself up and tell myself I'm on my shit. Yeah. But then having somebody be that gentle reminder, hey, Nah, you slacking, yeah. and you can your fullest potential is here, mm -hmm. and you not even playing that part. Yeah. So show up as your best self each day, and have mentors that are gonna push you to be greater. Facts, facts, facts. Don't get you know too comfortable. I feel Never. Like, you know, and if I'm if I'm comfortable, I'm not okay. Yeah. I actually flourish in uncomfortability. Yeah. Like it's cold in here right now. Yeah. Yeah. I don't need the heat on. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, don't need the heat on. No. Yeah, but you know, just, crazy. yeah, just the idea of like you know. Having people around you that, you yeah. know, because if everyone is just saying, like, oh, yeah, you know, good you're job, doing it, you're killing yeah, it. Yeah, right, right, no, you gotta have don't something, that's, like something that's like, yeah, don't you know, gaslight like me. There's always more that can be done. Yeah, like, and I love how, time. like, even my business partner, he's mm -hmm. like, I don't like this, this, and this. Yeah. I'm like, all right, so next meeting, this, this, and this, we fix. Exactly, exactly. You know, and that that way we, we check and balances, mm -hmm. we check each other, mm -hmm. you know, and just say, hey, you know, friends and family discount, uh, not so much. Yeah. Like, you know what <laughs> yeah, I mean? Yeah, yeah. I'm like, we, we can only do but so much. And it's just like, you know, you have that person that can check you mm -hmm. um, as well as like, you know, making sure everything is squared away. Gotcha. You need that. Facts. You, you know, need stay that. Stay in line. Yeah. Um, so are there any uh, final words that you want to leave our uh, audience with on a uh, um, legacy? I want to go back to saying being resilient, being brave, being confident in who you are first. And then when you build your business and your business model, sticks like literally stay strong to your morals and who you are um, people are going to tell you that you should have this and you should implement these things but take this baby steps that you need to take to get to the level that you want to get to everyone's going to have a vision of what you need to be doing for your business and you know who you are keep your vision of who you are in your mind at all times and who your future self is going to be i keep the vision of my future self in my head all the time and she'd be like ah 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 <laughs> you don't need to do that. That's not going to get us to where we need to be. And um, if you can keep that with you, I think that things will be dope for you. And uh, can't nobody tell you shit. So, that part. Facts. <laughs> that, that, that's the perfect wrap up um, you know, to this episode. And again, just want to thank you for, you know, um, being on the show. And also, too, just let you know, I'm happy for you. Yes, sir, because um, we go back. Yeah, the classical day. Yeah, uh, that was the, you mentioned enrichment, too. I was going to tell people like a little bit about yeah, that. Yeah, we go those, back to grade those school. Were, those were, those Middle were school days. and high school. Yeah, 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 yeah. And you play basketball. I play basketball. You were a year younger than me. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. 2012? Mm -hmm. Yeah, class of 2011. Shout, shout, shout out to uh, class. But those were those really the days. Yeah, those are um, stopping grounds right there. Yeah, yeah. And, that, and that's what I say, too. Like, just the idea of like knowing where you've been mm -hmm. and knowing where you are and knowing where you want to go. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? It's all kind of relative. Because that's saying. what molded us into the people we are yeah. now. Yeah. Whether we like it or not. Yeah. We all got our own thing going on. And there's now. growth. Like, there's, there's growth, you know, and just making sure, again, you. Honey. And y'all 10 year reunion coming up. So, uh, yeah. 2012, this is going to be interesting. If y'all ain't got a location yeah. for y'all 10 years. Oh, yeah. No, you. You might be on to something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because, yeah, there's been some... We're going to speak it into questions. existence. Yeah, there's, there's been some questions about that. There's yeah, we're going to speak it. Because, yeah, I know how y'all get down. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, child. <laughs> no, I remember uh, when we had prep rally days. I, Ooh. Yeah, different they colors. They clashed to act up. But, listen, I was... Yeah, different different colors and, and all that. That's real. So, yeah, it was yeah. different energy be between the... Yeah, it's about to be 10 years for y'all. Well, shit, it's 11 for me now. God. Yeah, yeah. That's. We just had ours. Really? What did y'all do? We had it here. For real? Yeah. Oh. Yeah, it was yeah, my yeah. chill. It yeah, was yeah, my chill. Yeah, you turned to, this into like an annual classical. Oh, it went, uh, yeah. What, uh, what, what month was it? 
So, so we did it in July this year. So right after so we opened. So when you oh, <laughs> right oh, after wow, we opened, wow, yeah, wow, okay, okay, okay. It would only really make sense. Right? Yeah. yeah. Wow. Yeah. That's that's damn. Our friends was a little. So problem. who's that class president? I'm not gonna say it now. Not gonna say it. So now, I, I, so I, I was VP. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and now there's been a lot of, you know. Um, All right. So somebody else is gonna have to about, step up to the plate. Yeah. What's VP. Going? <laughs> See, I'm calling him out. He gonna step up to the plate and he might coordinate y'all. Yeah, class, yeah, we, class we might be, yeah, we might have said something else. Something yeah, so I, by I've like got a lot of questions June, though. July time frame. Yeah, yeah. We'll yeah I remember day two. It was like June 9th I want to say. Yeah, we were June 11th, yeah. 2011. <laughs> well, you, did, you, you did it here, like in, like in. in, when, in when I did it in there. July, right when I first opened. Yeah. And I was gonna do it in June, but well, construction was not ready. Right. <laughs> construction was not ready. I made that last right, right, two, right. yeah, those last two weeks. I made a hustle and bustle. Got gotcha, you, yeah. got gotcha, you, got gotcha. you. Yeah, we 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 have to talk because, and I'll see, like I said, some, some questions. So. <laughs> That's gonna be interesting. I, I if not here, I would like to see how that goes. But yeah, we'll we'll see. <laughs> um, but yeah, on the uh, Defined Legacy front, y'all. Again, make sure you follow mm-hmm. on YouTube, Apple Podcasts. Instagram, we're on Twitter, mm-hmm. Facebook, all that. And again, check out the online store yes, sir. and the link of this episode. Like, just like that. Comment, subscribe. I did already. You hear, you hear. You okay, hear. what y'all waiting on? Just like that, yeah, we gone. Peace. That was two.